You know, I'm going to laugh my ass off if I actually just hold down on this fan and it actually stops with the background noise. Motherfucker. The greatest technician that's ever lived. Captain Smart Eye Pants asks, Any thoughts on the Total Drama reboot? Any thoughts on Digimon Adventure 02 The Beginning Trainer? What do you think of the online stores of 3DS and Wii U closing for good, and have you seen animes based on fairy tales? So, I've talked about the Total Drama reboot in my 2023 media thread, but I liked the first season decently enough. I have not seen season 2 yet, however. One day, though. As for the Adventure 2 movie, I have not seen it. After getting burned with Last Evolution Kizuna, I'm I'm avoiding Digimon Adventure like the plague. As for the online stores closing, yeah, I think it's it's fucking stupid. Especially because people were supporting it. But at the same time, stuff like Pretendo is at least available, so the online services isn't completely dead. As for the fairy tales question, I think the only one I've really seen is the Snow White with red hair one, so that's a stretch. But outside of that, I haven't. Robin Crusoe Jr. T asks, Have you read Chugga Conroy's Google Doc or Twitter thread address in the allegations? Any thoughts on Smiling Friends? And did you see Double Rain Boom MLP fan-made film? I have read the allegations. Whether or not I think it's a good apology, however, is not my place to decide because I was not one of his victims. It's good that he fucking acknowledged it at least. That's a relief. And it's good that he seems to be getting help. Whether or not it was a good apology is up to the victims, however. It is not my place to decide that. I've heard of Smiling Friends, but I've never seen an episode of it yet. I will add that to the backlog, though. As for Double Rain Boom, yes, I did see that back in the day. I wasn't a fan of it, but I have seen it. Master Wolf Ganjik asks, Did you watch Lyle Convoy's Addressing Things video and any thoughts on the Smurfs? I have seen Lyle's video addressing the allegations, and it's good that he's finally addressed them after a couple of months. Now, whether or not he's being truthful, we'll see in due time, but for the moment, I'm glad that he's at least addressed it and we'll see what happens going forward, effectively. Maybe he's lying, maybe he's telling the truth, we'll see in due time. But I'm glad that he's addressed it, that's good. As for the Smurfs, they're fine. Wasn't really my thing growing up, but it's fine. Common Homer Simpson asks, Did you see Doodle Tone's video on Raven Pines and Lyo Convoy, as well as the live stream with Lyo Jaranakumu? I have seen Doodle's video regarding Raven Pines and Lyo Convoy a couple of times, and I think it's good. As for the live stream with Lyo Jaranakumu, I have not seen the video, largely because there were so much videos going over Lyo and Peaches at the time that I just tuned out after a while, and that also meant the Lyo Jaranakumu live stream. So I've seen the Doodle video, have not seen the live stream. A Justice 90 slash Monster Tamer AJ asks, Like Taco Draws Obsidian Blaze, what are some original projects made by artists you follow that you're interested in? Thus and all the multiverse stuff everyone's trying to do these days. What's a show or a movie that you had no expectations for but turned out to be really good? What are some of your guilty pleasures and favorite Superman moments? Yes, I have been reading slash watching some original projects made by artists that I follow that I'm interested in, one of them being Gun Kitty, which I've talked about several times. Another one is Roomies by my good pal Emerald, which you should see. Another is Feelings Wanted to Change by my good friend Ritsu, which is available on Tapas as well as Webtoon, I believe. So that's some really good stuff. Outside of that, uh, there's Emblemental Neo by my good pal Bolt. So I've been reading that. Good stuff. Just off the top of my head, effectively. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some others, but yes, those are some of the projects that I do enjoy and I have been reading slash watching. It's a hit or miss when it comes down to multiverse stuff. Sometimes it can be really good, like with Invincible stuff, but other times it can be Dragon Ball Multiverse, aka a hot pile of garbage. As for sure, a movie that I had no expectations for but turned out to be really good, Mari movie, 100%. Either that or the Death and Return of Superman duology, the animated one, because I thought those two were going to suck, but no, they were actually really good. So I'll go with those. Uh, Guilty Pleasures. Uh, there's a couple of volumes of Ruby that I like that the other people seem to hate. And as for favorite Superman moment... Dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us into something better. I swear that until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice are the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting. Nico Safer one asks, Any thoughts on Johnny Flash? Have you seen Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender? Did you see Netflix's Good Times animated series trailer? Have you seen the FFI video of the most infamous fairy artists? Did you hear that Just a Robot channel got hacked? And any thoughts on the Tesla Cybertruck? Johnny Flash exists? I don't really have much thoughts on them outside of that. As for the Netflix series, I haven't seen it, largely because I don't have Netflix. I have, however, seen the Good Times animated trailer, and it looks like hot garbage, and apparently some people have seen it, and it's garbage, so, uh, 
Looks like I missed the boat on that one, thankfully. As for the FFI video, I haven't, but I will add that to the backlog. I did hear that Jar's account got hacked, and uh, what the fuck, people? God damn it. But at least he got his channel back, which is good. And as for the Tesla Cybertruck, I would say it's like a lot of things with Elon Musk. Broken and messy. And the final set of comments come from Zansprinus. What if Akira Toriyama was involved in the Pokemon anime and games with designs and stories? Why did Bulma name her kids after underwear? How much did Toei ruin Chi-Chi? Did Akira hate Team Four Star Information? How different was Master Roshi in the manga? Do you think Master Roshi Powerful and Super was an awful idea? Are you aware in a particular page of the manga, Trunks mentions why Bulma left Yamcha? Do you consider Piccolo took and trained Gohan as abuse? Was Pan from GT really that bad of a character? Do you think Tien and Launch not being together from Xeon onwards was a terrible decision? Best and worst fights in Tournament of Power? Why Goku wasn't angry with his friends that they never told him that he was the one who killed Grandpa's son Gohan? Was Oolong and Yajiru always useless? Do you think Mr. Satan could beat Goku in the original Dragon Ball? Did Akira treat his workers well? Why Goku and Grandpa Son Gohan didn't meet from Z onwards and Grandpa Son Gohan didn't meet his grandkids? And could Chi-Chi be a better fighter and character if she was a part of all the Dragon Ball Z stories? Um, if Akira was involved with Pokemon anime and games with the designs and stories, I think it's mostly hit or miss because there are some stuff that he's contributed to that wasn't always the best. See Blue Dragon. But it could also be good in some aspects. It's kind of hit or miss for me, I think. As for the Bulma naming, it largely comes down to her original name in Japanese, which, well, has several romanizations slash translations, but it roughly goes down to Buruma, Bluma, Bloomer. Effectively, her name was already related to undergarments. And then trunks and bra, basically undergarments again. Usually. As for Toei ruining Chi-Chi, they effectively just upped her negative traits, like her screaming, her bitching, effectively making her into a caricature of what she was at the end of the Piccolo Daimao saga slash King Piccolo saga, as well as the early portions of the time skip that, well, we Americans know as Dragon Ball Z, the Raditz stuff, the Saiyan saga, what have you. Effectively, they upped her negative traits and super double down on this heavily. As for Akira Toriyama hating Team 4 Star in front of Mation, I don't know because I don't think he really ever mentioned them. Roshi's manga appearance is roughly the same as the anime, minus the filler of course, so not a whole lot changed there. As for making him powerful and Super being a bad idea, no, and I say that largely because of the fact that Dragon Ball has always been inconsistent with power scaling for these characters, so I'm not too surprised that they just randomly upscaled Roshi's power because they always did this in Dragon Ball randomly with characters. As for your seventh question, if I remember correctly that largely boiled down to him being a playboy, and I'm sorry, that was just fucking stupid. As for Piccolo taking and training Gohan's abuse, yes, that's basically what he did. I know he had his reasons, but he did treat Gohan terribly, so yes, I would qualify that as abuse. Was Pan from GT really that out of a character? Yes. Yes, they did. Absolutely. She was so annoying, she barely did a whole lot throughout the series. She was bad. As for Tien and Launch not being together, I don't think it was necessarily a terrible decision, largely because of the fact that the relationship was just whatever. My issue was more so just the fact that by that point in the story, Akira just kind of gave up on the human characters for the most part, except for maybe Krillin, and just decided, fuck it, Saiyans are hip now, we're going with that shit. As for the best and worst fights in Tournament Power, one of my favorites, outside of the final fight with Goku, Android 17, Frieza, and Jiren, probably the big fight against the giant mech. Worst fight would probably be Tien versus the guy, because what the fuck was that nonsense? Either that or the whole fight with the bugs, that was just dumb. As for Goku not being angry, I think it's largely because his friends had no idea regarding Grandpa Gohan's fate. Only Goku did, and that's only after, like, the Ozara transformation from Vegeta. As for Oolong and Yajirobe being always useless, sort of. I think there was a couple times where Yajirobe helped out, like with Sensu Beans, and I think there was a time when he helped Goku during King Piccolo's arc, but that's about it. So, yeah, he was pretty much useless, as well as Oolong, for the most part. Except for, like, maybe one moment in early Dragon Ball, which was to stop Pilaf from getting his wish, but that's about it. And as for Satan beating Goku, no. Considering all the insane feats that the characters in the first couple tournaments of Dragon Ball did, like blowing up the moon and shit, um, I don't think Mr. Satan would have stood a chance. Um, Akira treating his workers well, 
probably i don't think we heard any horror stories coming out of his company slash workers slash ex-workers regarding akita's treatment so it's possible that he was fine it's hard to say um as for grandpa son gohan not meeting from z onwards so initially the reason was no idea lazy writing but i guess we did kind of get an explanation much later on thanks to the boo saga in which goku returned for a day so it's probably a situation of grandpa gohan got to come back for a day and that's about it and then once his time was up he couldn't return so that's probably why as for your last question it's possible but it's also very much possible that she would have also fallen by the wayside similar to the likes of tian yamcha and Krillin, especially as he went on so it's possible that she could have been better, but it's also possible she could have just fallen by the wayside similar to the others. And that'll do it for this edition of Ask a Grim. Thank you all so much for asking your questions, I really do appreciate it. And if you have any comments or questions you'd like to see on the next episode, leave them in the comments below of either this video or in the community post that I'll throw up because YouTube is being stupid again. But yeah, I'd love to read it. So until then, I'll see you next month for Ask a Grim. Thank you all for watching and have a fantastic day.